Hello, and welcome to the 2021 version of Firearms Friday from the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne, Wyoming. My name is Evan Green. I'm a volunteer here at the museum, and uh, for the last two or three years, I've been updating information on the firearms in the museum's permanent collection. And uh, we're happy to be back doing these, doing these videos. Uh, the, the epidemic, the pandemic interrupted lots of things and certainly the ability to access these firearms and uh, do the close contact necessary to make the videos. We just stopped doing that for about a year, but I'm really happy to be back doing it. And I hope you're looking forward to more of these uh, videos. So today we have this uh, rather rusty firearm uh, was donated to the museum by the Gasson family and they were sheep ranchers, uh, several generations of sheep ranchers in the area between Farson, Wyoming and Rock Springs. This rifle was picked up by a member of the family uh, at an area about 12 or 13 miles southwest of Farson on property owned by the Gassons. And they noted that there had been a Mormon fight uh, in this area and speculated that this rifle might have been left on the battleground at that time. So, okay, that's pretty interesting. Uh, what was a Mormon fight? So, doing a little research, uh, there was a, a series of incidents, really, depending on your perspective, they were called either the Mormon War of 1857 or the Utah Expedition of 1857. And how this played out is the, the Mormons had been basically driven from eastern states, uh, Missouri and, uh, and Illinois, their, their founding saint and his brother, uh, Joseph Smith and his brother were killed by a mob who took them out of a jail in, in Illinois where they had been held on charges of whatever, uh, basically not being popular with uh, the rest of the folks for some of their beliefs and practices. So anyway, uh, the Mormons migrated further west into the Salt Lake Valley. And in 1850, President uh, Fillmore made Brigham Young, then the leader of the Mormons, the governor of Utah Territory. And he got some pushback for that, from, again, from the people who were upset with, with the Mormons. But when James Buchanan was elected in 1856, he was hearing some of this same uh, pushback and was encouraged to appoint a non-Mormon as the governor of Utah Territory. He offered this position to two or three people and they said, nope, not going there. Uh, and had he had just the decency to reach out to the Mormons and let them know what was going on, uh, this whole incident, series of incidents might have been avoided. But Buchanan ordered a contingent of army troops, 1,500 troops with their supporting wagons and supplies to go with this new Utah governor to make sure that he was installed in the government without any problems with the Mormons. Well, the Mormons, I think, legitimately were a little bit uh, paranoid uh, to see this huge uh, contingent of soldiers coming into their land. So they organized a militia, and this militia was instructed to avoid, if they could, firefights with the soldiers, but to do what they could to delay the process of those soldiers arriving in Utah. And they did that. They burned the forage, they burned Fort Bridger, they burned a couple of wagon trains, in fact. And at this site, southwest of Farson, where this rifle was found, they, uh, they burned 27, uh, 27 wagons. So uh, that's, that's kind of interesting. And any time that a, a, a firearm can be tied to a person, a historic event, or represents a change in technology that adds to the interest and collector's value. So if we could, if we could tie this to that incident, that would be kind of a good thing, kind of interesting. So what is this? Well, I had no idea. So, you know, Google is your friend. So 
let's take a look at what we have here. This is a carbine. It is breech loading, and the breech opens kind of like a door here with this knob, if it wasn't frozen by rust, would open the breech so that a cartridge could be loaded into the chamber. So when did this happen? Well, as with most wars, the Civil War created a tremendous demand for firearms for both sides and led to a lot of individual firearms inventors developing new systems to try and meet that demand. So, okay, go on the internet and Google for breech-loading Civil War carbines, hit images, and scrolling through, sure enough, one comes up that looks very much like this, it looks identical to this, in fact. So this is a Joslin carbine and model of 1864. Uh, wait a minute, the fight by Farson was when? October 5th, 1857. So there is not that connection, and how this particular firearm ended up in that particular location is anybody's guess. So anyway, this, like I say, is in pretty, pretty sad shape, uh, still identifiable. It was, uh, it was used in the Civil War and issued to some Union troops. Um, it's missing some of its critical parts. There was a carbine ring that would have been attached uh, on these two holes, a bar and ring. Uh, for uh, normally these were carbines were issued to cavalry and that ring allowed them to attach the weapon, the firearm, either to their saddle or to their uh, cross chest band, band uh, so that they wouldn't drop that, that firearm. So okay, uh, we've identified this. It's a Joslin Model 1864. Well, what I forgot was that in fact, we had a very similar carbine in the collection. And this is sort of what the old rusty one would have looked like had it not been subjected to the elements for many years. This is actually a Joslin carbine model of 1862, so it was earlier. And one of the problems with the 1862, as with other, some of the other breech-loading cartridge carbines of that era, was getting a good seal at the breech so that when the firearm was discharged, you didn't get gas and stuff coming out of that breech. So the original 1862 just had a little thumb lever here that you could open the breech. This is the transitional model that has the same latch, uh, making that breech more secure that we would see later on in the model of 1864. So a couple of uh, really nice firearms. Um, this one also is different in that it has a brass butt plate, a brass trigger guard, and a brass uh, ring on the fore end. So there you have a couple of Joslin carbines from the Civil War era.